From the Stroh Center on the campus of Bowling Green State University, the opening game of the season for both the Bowling Green Falcons and the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. Hello everyone, Greg Frankie, along with Ken Garland here. And it should be, I think, a pretty good matchup here today between these two teams. They both won their exhibition game in pretty impressive fashion. Both teams were a little down in terms of their regular season last year, Bowling Green losing in the first round of the MAC tournament. But this Colonels team, they were the first team ever in the Ohio Valley Conference to finish seventh and make it to the championship, but they lost a lot of players from that team. Well, they really have. And I'll tell you what, when you look at the two rosters, again, two pretty evenly matched teams on paper, but also two teams that have really lost a lot of talent. You look again at Eastern Kentucky, about three quarters of their players are new. For Bowling Green, almost half. So the coaches are going to find out a lot about their teams here tonight. Well, one good thing for Bowling Green is that the players that they have left are some of their key players, including Carly Santoro, who now in going into her junior year is preseason all Mid-American Conference. She's been outstanding ever since she got to the program, but now I think she can really take on the re leadership role and continuing to be outstanding on the floor. Well, in the exhibition game against Seton Hall, she picked up right where she left off a year ago. She had 12 points in that game, which was her average last season. So she's still a very good threat offensively for this Falcon in team. season opener at Eastern Kentucky last year, she had her first career double-double, scoring 20 points and 12 rebounds against this team. On the Eastern Kentucky side, they've been more or less decimated. They lost nine players from last year. Abby Wright is back. She is their leading returning score despite 6.3 points a game but she's going to be on floor a lot more and she was really dominant in their OVC semifinal victory to get them into the final she's going to be a real key player for them this year no question about it how she goes I think is how the team is going to go this season yep and they've got a lot of good young talent that they're going to try to bring along as this season goes on should be a very even matchup Bowling Green and Eastern Kentucky to kick off the season for both these teams coming up Colonels here at Bowling Green, Ohio to face the Bowling Green Falcons and the lights have dimmed and about to have the introduction of the starting lineups here prior to this game and some pyrotechnics to entertain the fans. <laughs> well, the starting lineups, of course, it'll be interesting to see exactly how long these players stay in the game. Greg, we're expecting a lot of substitutions here tonight for both of these teams. And again, we talked about that a little bit earlier in regard to the coaches wanting to look at as many players as possible. This is a season opening game. It is an important win for both of these clubs. But at the same time, because of their youth on both sides, these coaches need to find out who can do what in certain situations. So again, I think the substitutions are going to be taking place quite often here this evening. Indeed, in addition to the fact that they've only played one exhibition game each, and they were successful. Bowling Green defeated Seton Hill last Sunday by 30 points, 92 to 62. And they got good all-around performance from their lineup. A lot of depth throughout the players coming in off the bench. But they want to see if they can do that in a regulation game. And on the other side, it was Eastern Kentucky. They had a victory over Davis and Elkins. 67-54, and they had some of their newcomers really show up well. And they're going to see if they can do that in an actual game against a very comparable opponent as we see Bowling Green introducing their starting lineup. There's another one of their key players in Sydney Lambert. We'll be watching a lot of her. 71 three-point shots in her career. And she is one of the top in program history already in that regard, Carly Santoro. And those are really the two leaders for Bowling Green. No question about it. It's interesting that the squad actually has four captains this year. Those are two of them. And again, they are providing some of that leadership. And leadership is really something that I think might be missing a little bit here at the outset of the season because the team is so young. But two of those players, those two that we were just talking about, are definitely going to be looked to to lead on the court and off. Haley Puck, 33, is another one of those senior captains. And the one we saw introduced before, Jane Euchre, 24. The Falcons have 
Traditionally, in the last couple of years, they've been a very good perimeter team. They need a little bit more presence inside. She was injured, number 24 there, 12 games in, missed the rest of the season. She's back now, six foot three. She's going to give Bowling Green a valuable presence, I would think, this year. No question. You know, she's looking forward to this season because of what's happened in the past. This is a chance for her to make a name and a mark for this ball club. All right. Eastern Kentucky in the dark uniforms. And I'll, ready to start. I'll be curious to see what happens here as the ball is tipped. I would not be surprised to see Eastern Kentucky come out defensively and start to press right away, trying to trap. This is something that Bowling Green is expecting. They've been working on it in practice. They're expecting to see it definitely coming out of timeouts and perhaps right here at the start of the game. So we'll see what kind of defense Eastern Kentucky goes to here. we got to look at Chrissy Roberts on the end of the bench for Eastern Kentucky. She's a former player for the Colonels, a Hall of Fame member, and she likes to run a high-tempo game. So we'll see indeed if that's what occurs. Shea Solomon got the opening tip off. She's a sophomore guard, one of the good young players on this Colonels team. A lot of them are going to have to be stepping up after they lost nine players that were key the last couple of years for a team that two years in a row made the OVC tournament championship game. Pass underneath Emily Rosario, lost it, the ball on the floor. Rosario got it back and then a pass underneath knocked down. Bowling Green player is injured. Haley Puck went down. She almost looked like she got hit by a puck. Rebound. And they're going to stop the play. And she got hit in the mouth. I think she's going to be all right here. But, uh, yeah, she went down, and you could see as soon as she did that she was in a little bit of pain right away. Looked like Bowling Green was about to come up with a steal. And the ball apparently hit her and went loose on the floor. Eastern Kentucky almost got it back and scored, but Bowling Green finally came up with it. And now they will have their first chance to have an offensive possession. Great hustle on that play, on, on that particular exchange for both of those teams. So that might set the tone for this evening. It's going to have to be a hallmark for both of these teams as they look to improve on their regular season performance from a year ago. Bowling Green, of course, trying to bring back some of the glory days of this program. And Santoro tried to drive and was fouled on the play by Rosario. Last year, Eastern Michigan, I should say Eastern Kentucky, Eastern Michigan, of course, Bowling Green will be seeing them in the MAC. They started the season at Richmond, Kentucky. It was a two-point win for Eastern Kentucky. Santoro got 20 points. Nice penetration and laid in by Haley Puck. So I guess she's not yep. bothered too much by that injury. Not at all. She went to the left hand there, found a little bit of a crease, and did an excellent job driving to the basket. That will help Bowling Green to get penetration to open up their outside game. Shot from 12 feet, and that one knocked down by Madison Pierce. Out of Birmingham, Alabama, players coming from many of the southern states to join the Eastern Kentucky program. And we're tied at two. Lambert inside, ball knocked away, and out come the Colonels, led by Rosario. Euchre, her 6'3 presence, forced her to back out. That shot way off line by Abby Wright and a whistle underneath and a foul is called here. On the scramble for the ball on Gene Euchre. Yeah, well, good job there by the defensive Bully Green as they came out right away to challenge right on that shot and she really never got a good clean look at the basket as a result. Good job by Euchre to get back and slow down the break so they had to settle for the perimeter shot. It was well off line by Abby Wright. Now it is Shea Solomon. Quick point guard, very athletic, and a whistle underneath. And the ball will go back over to Bowling Green. And we'll get our first look at Jalen Martin for Eastern Michigan. A freshman from Lexington, Kentucky. Probably followed the fortunes of the Wildcats throughout her Ladder up the basketball ranks. Inside pass nicely to Euchre from Centoro and puts it in off glass. And that was a very nicely executed pick and roll to make it 4-2. Very good rotation on that play inside to Euchre. Bowling Green has looked effective on offense. Getting the penetration layup left-handed by Puck and then that nice find under the basket 
from Santoro to Euchre. Now it is Bria Bass, 15. She got 19 points in the exhibition win for Eastern Kentucky. Just a freshman. Wright had to throw one up to beat the shot clock. It was offline, and back comes Santoro, and she is fouled by Shea Solomon. Well, defensively, Bowling Green doing a very nice job. You talked about their offense, but on the other end of the court here, what they have been successful in doing is sealing off the middle, and they've been forcing Eastern Kentucky to stay outside and not allowing any penetration to the basket. Now they have not given up high percentage shots to Eastern. Abby Wright going off. She did not look all that happy with the play in the first couple of minutes. And Bria Bass also leaving the floor. Santoro from the corner puts it up. That one well short. And the rebound out to Martin. Picking up the tempo. He said they like to play at a fast tempo whenever they can. A Queen Hayes, number three, is in. She's a player to watch. She was on the all-freshman team in the SEC when she played at Ole Miss. And a blocking foul there is called on Andrea Cecil from Oak Harbor, where she was an outstanding high school player and really came on last year for Bowling Green in her freshman year as the season went on. She's quick, you can see that right away. We're talking about Hayes here who's inbounding the ball, but she did a very nice job there of making a very quick move, trying to get to the basket, and in the process, picked up that blocking foul just because of her speed. Martin tosses one up from way out, and that one is right on. And that puts Eastern Kentucky up by 5-4. Looking at a man-to-man -man defense inside, and a foul was called on number 21, Madison Pierce. And it will be inbounded to the right of the basket underneath by Sidney Lambert. Not for Santora, who's really controlled things offensively. Everything has flowed through her in the early going. Lambert up high, lets one fly, and that one lands heavily, rebounded by Pierce. And out comes Eastern Kentucky. Hayes all the way to the basket, and there's what we talked yep, about, the that's athleticism. That that's how you make the All-SEC rookie team. Exactly. It's just that they love to do it. They love to get that ball down quickly, like we've been mentioning, and uh, they have no hesitation at all to take it to the rim. Puck puts one up, no good. Another rebound by a Queen Hayes. And here they come again. And she is leading the break all by herself. They force her back. Better job by Bowling Green that time, dropping back on defense. Coach Jennifer Roos looking like she wants to get involved in the defense, but she's always very much immersed in the game over there on the Falcon bench. Knocked out of bounds. Possession will be maintained by Eastern Kentucky. Falcons definitely hope to have an improved squad this year. 4-14 Four and 14 in MAC play last year. They were knocked out by Buffalo in the first round of the MAC tournament. But they feel they've got a very good incoming class this year. And a lot of their key players, juniors and seniors now. Fade away, no good by Hayes. She's really been a major presence since entering the game. Back comes Lambert. Euchre is open. Katerian Thompson, a local product just south of here from Lima, Ohio. Very athletic fre uh, freshman last year, now sophomore, stolen, and that one's put up and in by Sidney Lambert. Yeah, Lambert doing a nice job of anticipating there. And she just cut in front to take that pass away for the easy basket. Some more high energy defense. Definitely, you could see it on both sides though, really. I mean, there's a lot of, uh, a lot of hustle being shown here by both of these teams. There's a certain amount of electricity for the first real game of the season. There's a stop and go penetration and a whistle and a foul called as Shea Solomon went to the basket and was fouled by Andrea Cecil. That's her second foul and early foul trouble for her, a key player for Bowling Green. Timeout on the floor, 450 remaining here in the first quarter. Eastern Kentucky leading 7-6.
type play early in the season, but you always like to see the hustle, and both both teams really have been showing that early in this game. Really good intensity, and of course, most of that probably due to the fact that this is the season opener. So, a lot of uh, a lot of energy right now. A lot of players, young players especially, playing for court time early in the year. Shea Solomon back on at the point guard position. The Queen Hayes is still out there. She really made an impact early. And here is a foul away from the ball on Sierra Thompson. Just a freshman. She got 17 points, 7 of 7 from the field. Sierra Thompson, number 42 for Bowling Green. We'll see how long she can keep that going. Well, she's very highly touted, particularly the way she sets screens. So we'll keep an eye on that when uh, the Falcons actually have the ball offensively. Queen Hayes again gets through everybody, but careening in there too quickly to really have much of a chance to finish that play. Now it is Thompson. She drives a floater, no good. And rebound taken back out by Taylor Richardson. Eastern Kentucky winning the rebounding battle early here, 8-3 to three right now. Have a bit of a size edge on the Falcons and have been utilizing that to their advantage so far. A nice penetration right-hander off the window to... Make it 9-6. And Eastern Kentucky, again, no hesitation to go to the basket. They are penetrating and trying to open up that middle, and they're doing a good job of it. They're controlling the boards, and they're getting the basket offensively. And they have tightened up a little bit after Bowling Green looked effective in their first couple of possessions. That shot halfway down, no good for Lambert. And diving in, trying to win that loose ball. But... Instead, got called for the foul. And it looked like she came down, tweaked her knee just a little bit there, too, but she's walking it off. And that puts them in the bonus. Five fouls for Bowling Green here in this opening quarter with still three and a half minutes to go. Three and a half plus. And now it's a Queen Hayes at the free throw line. Shot is up and good. She averaged 7.3 points, 4.3 rebounds at Ole Miss when she was on the all-freshman team. That was 14-15. Then last year she came back with a similar year, 6.3, 5.3, and at one time was the 13th-ranked player in all of Mississippi. And checking in Madison Parker for Bowling Green, a freshman for her first game action as a member of the Bowling Green program. <laughs> Hayes drops that one to make it 11-6. So Bowling Green, after they got off to a quick start, Eastern Kentucky has really come on, opened up a five-point margin. And the Parker. Lambert. Fake. Back outside Lambert again. Down to five on the shot clock. Fade away, no good. And rebound snagged nicely, put back up, and a foul is called there. So that will not spoil Sierra Thompson's perfect field goal percentage. <laughs> and she'll get to the free throw line. She does look very athletic, and she's got a lot of height and a lot of things to her advantage. And a pretty quick first step to the basket there. Once she got that rebound, she, would, she went right back up with it. 5'11" but a long 5-11. Shot no good from the free throw line, so the deficit remains five. A good vertical and good reach to go with that 5-11. No good. Missed both free throws, and Bowling Green misses the chance to get closer on the scoreboard. Although Thompson looked impressive getting to the line. Hayes. Pulling Green into a 2-3 zone to try to shut down this penetration. Shot is up, no good. A rebound once again taken out by Thompson. Sierra Thompson going to take it to the basket. And a block was called. And she'll get to the free throw line again. It's interesting, you were talking about Thompson and her athleticism. And when you look at the recruiting, 
in terms of the new players that we've been talking about that have uh, been added to the team this year for Bowling Green, one of the things that you'll see in terms of uh, similarity between all of them is height and inside players. So that definitely was a, an area of uh, emphasis in terms of recruiting for Coach Jennifer Roos. And she hit that free throw after missing two the last time. And that one also looks good. So that looks like an aberration that she missed those two the last trip. And Bowling Green back within a tray. Hayes now running things from the point. Back out for Richardson. And she maneuvered her way in and scored over Terry Battle to make it 13-8. Every player on this team seems to be adept at getting to the basket. Parker outside. Well, she had a notion on that shot from well beyond the arc, then drove, but was not able to get a good look at the basket. And out comes Eastern Kentucky again with Joya Smith, one of two sisters. Joy and Jalissa inside pass, and Madison Wood lays it home. And it is 15-8. Eastern has really come on since the first couple of minutes. Well, since the last time out, they've outscored Bowling Green 8-2. And Bowling Green's offense is all but ground to a halt here after they looked sharp in their first two or three possessions. Inside to battle, off balance, kind of tossed it up, no good. Rebound, Wood. Yeah, good defense there inside as uh, Battle got pushed away that time by Richardson underneath. Hayes, kick out, and that'll be a traveling call as Richardson moved her pivot foot too quickly. And Bowling Green bringing in Euchre again. Kennedy Williams, who could be the point guard of the future, number one. Coach Roos says she is one of the quicker and better ball handling point guards that they have brought in. A long history of excellent point guards in this program. And there is... Chrissy Roberts, the head coach for Eastern Kentucky, the Hall of Famer, led the team as a player to their first ever OVC title and NCAA tournament appearance. Inside, nice move, Sierra Thompson, but she just couldn't finish. Still got her own rebound, though. Double team, force it up and gets to the line again. You like the fact that she can get to the basket, she can take it hard, and she gets to the free throw line. This is her third trip already in the first quarter. Well, she kept moving, which was really nice to see. She went up, took the shot, missed it, but kept moving along the baseline, came under the basket, never gave up, got her own rebound, and now she ends up back at the free throw line. Great effort. Showing aggressiveness. Not shy to take it to the basket, and the way she fought for that rebound of her own missed shot as well, something you like to see, and now she's hit the last three free throws in a row and after missing the first two and now it's four straight so that doesn't look like it's going to be a negative as far as her game is concerned her free throw shooting final minute here first quarter Bowling Green back to within five still in that 2-3 zone Hayes trying to direct some traffic Joya Smith, she and her sister Jalissa played together at Three Rivers Community College before coming to Eastern. That shot no good, tried to save it, but stepped out. And Bowling Green will have a chance to score here and draw close before the end of the first quarter and go on a high note if they can do that. Well, the Falcons have made some nice adjustments defensively again as they have now started to force Eastern Kentucky to take more outside shots. They have sealed off that middle since the start of the game. Thompson has really brought a lot to the Falcons since checking in about halfway through the quarter. Down to five seconds. Euchre will put it up. Came up just short. Santoro crashes the boards. Might have been fouled, but I believe the buzzer had already gone to end the first quarter. Bowling Green started quick and ended quick, but in between, Eastern Kentucky was in control. They lead by five. Ten Bowling Green will 
get the initial possession inbounded by Sierra Thompson, who I think is maybe the biggest reason for encouragement we saw in that first quarter for Bowling Green this year. Now again, playing very aggressively and setting a good tone. And to go with a good deal of quickness and skill. Kennedy Williams to Euchre. Santoro trying to penetrate and was fouled by Joya Smith. Looked like that Smith was going to get some help on the baseline, but she ended up having to commit the foul over the shoulder. There's Bria Bass, number 15, who had the 19 points in the exhibition win over Davis and Elkins College. Nice rotation on that free throw. <laughs> Santoro, she hardly, maybe didn't even get a chance to start an outstanding high school career and collegiate career when she had a kidney laceration in eighth grade. It almost ended her career, but she was able to persevere through it and ended up having, as I said, tremendous prep career, and she's been outstanding at Bowling Green as well. She scored 2,387 career points in high school. And that ball is nearly stolen by Williams, and then she ends up committing a foul as she tried to get back in the play and defend. Well, again, good hustle and good anticipation, but the problem is all of her momentum was going forward so that she had no, chance, no choice, rather, but to end up committing that foul. She couldn't, uh, unfortunately, couldn't reset herself in time. She'll have her hands full against Hayes. Coach Ruse said she's one of the quickest point guards that Bowling Green has brought in. She's going to have to be in that matchup. Inside pass to Brittany Grice. Knocked away, though, and Bowling Green comes up with the ball. Well, you know, you mentioned a little bit earlier, Greg, you were talking about the competition between the players this year, and there definitely is some competition for playing time this uh, in this season. And I think, you know, if, particularly at that point guard, you think back to Rachel Myers. Good shot there by Williams, so she makes a good impression early. And Williams is one of those who's going to, you know, fight for a job, and Myers' role already from last year has been diminished because of some of this young talent. And if that's an early indication, Kennedy Williams is going to bring a lot to the table. And there's a steal by Santoro at midcourt. Takes it in, draws the foul. And we saw that with Sierra Thompson, but we've also seen it with Centoro. She gets the ball. She will take it right to the basket. And again, just reaching in right there, just anticipating good hustle and then taking it down the court. Just didn't get the basket, but she'll have a chance for the free throws. Talking about Santoro, she was at Bellevue. She was first team All-State District Player of the Year. Tenth in all of Ohio High School Athletic Association history with her point total. 2,387. She averaged over 30 a game. Third in state history her senior year. But that steal that we just saw, a good example of what happened or what can happen at least when you just keep those hands moving and anticipate a little bit. Keep reaching. And that's exactly what Carly did. Bowling Green has been impressive on defense out in the open court and in the back court. Eastern Kentucky has had some success getting inside. There's another steal though. Puck leaves it off for Centoro. Straight in and she scores and Bowling Green is down 15 to 10. Going into the second quarter is on a 9-0 run. In the second quarter, a timeout Eastern Kentucky. Bowling Green is up four here at the Stroh Center. Fifteen Bowling Green ended the first quarter strong and they've come right out of the second with that cannon effect. And they've really been dominating largely because of their ability to produce turnovers defensively. Well, you look at the turnover rate, Joe. Six for Eastern Kentucky, none for Bowling Green. A key factor in this one. Not only have they been coming up with steals, they've been taking care of the ball. Here is Hayes outside for Abby Wright. Into the corner. Now to Madison Wood trying to go inside. Nearly stolen again. They have to put up a perimeter shot and hit. 
by Emily Rosario to break the point scheme here in the second quarter. Well, you can see what the BG defense is doing. They are just going for the ball, and they are double teaming in some instances and just, again, getting as many hands on that ball as possible. Yeah, they're just swarming and causing numerous problems for Eastern Kentucky. And they were fortunate to get that good look at the basket after the near steal. Now in comes Valerie Clark replacing Rosario, who just hit that free throw, or should hit that three-point shot, I should say. Well, we were talking about the turnover ratio, but you mentioned free throws. That's the other thing that's really helped Bowling Green in this one. They have hit eight out of ten from the line so far. Four in a row by Sierra Thompson after missing the first two. There is Abby Wright, who connects from downtown to put Eastern Kentucky back on top. Abby Wright had 8.7 rebounds and five blocks in the OVC semi last year that helped them get to the finals. And another blocking foul. Santoro has really been successful in drawing fouls as she takes the ball to the rack. It's interesting to see Bowling Green penetrate as much as it has only because the three-point shot is a big part of this team's game. There's no question about that. They've got one three-pointer already here tonight. Uh, but, you know, when you go back and you look at it, just to, just to prove how much they love the three-point shot, they've had a three-point goal now in 401 right. straight games. So it's definitely a part of their offensive arsenal. Twelve players. Basically everyone on the roster hit at least one three last year. And that is the staple of their game. Hit to make 2020. At times, it's even too much of a staple of their game. They need a little more inside presence, and it looks like Sierra Thompson and Jane Euchre may really be able to help in that regard this year. Outside, Hayes, pull up, 10-footer, good, nicely yeah. done. But there you can see exactly what we were talking about. She pulled up. She got sealed off inside. So, again, Bowling Green doing a nice job defensively. They'll give up that shot if they exactly. can consistently make them more power to them. But they will take that to keep them from getting to the basket. Outside shot. Perfect. Santoro fills it up. So, there you go. Santoro inside. And now Santoro outside. And Santoro with seven points in this game so far. Leading the way for Bowling Green as she's expected to do throughout the course of this year. The preseason all-Mac pick, that ball is kicked by Lambert as she tried to deny that inside pass. And Eastern Kentucky will put it in to the left of the basket. Hayes up high for Madison Wood. Six foot three senior post player. Joya Smith. No good. And they force him into a shot that is not the highest percentage for them. A three on two the other way. Centauro open from the other side and she knocks it down from there. A three pointer. Nicely run three on two. Santoro hit one from the left, now one from the right. She's up to double digit scoring and Bowling Green leads by four. Out for Abby Wright. Good perimeter ball movement inside and the baby hook. The ball drops for Madison Wood as she was fading away from the basket. Wood got the bounce, but a nice play inside. Nice little soft hook that time. Andrea Cecil back on after picking up the two early fouls for Bowling Green. Santoro slicing off Thompson's pick. This time the ball was partially blocked, no foul call, but Bowling Green will maintain possession. Well, you said earlier the Bowling Green D offense is going through Carly Santoro, and I'll tell you what, you can see now that they're trying to ride her hot hand as well. This is the time that they want to get the ball to her for sure. Said she got 20 last year at Eastern Kentucky to open the season. She's halfway there, and we still have over five minutes to go in the first half, and a shot is good by Haley Puck. She bombs one in from long range. It's 29-24. Falcons hit three threes, their last three possessions. Outside line drive, low trajectory shot by Valerie Clark. No good. Bowling Green ball up the over-the-top foul. 
that is called on Madison Pierce. Now Clark had a nice opportunity there. She had plenty of time, more time I think than she realized she had. She was open and she definitely got a very flat shot off. A little more trajectory and that could have been different. Two of the keys there for Bowling Green you just saw. Jane Euchre coming in to replace Sierra Thompson. If those two really step up and give Bowling Green more of an inside presence to go with their already well-developed perimeter game, plus with the strong defense we've seen from them, could be a winning formula as they look to get back on the winning track for the first time in several years. Winning was a habit for so long here. Shot good from Cecil. And it's an eight-point lead. Andrea Cecil, the D2 Player of the Year in Ohio at Oak Arbor, Harbor High School in 15-16. Sophomore at Bowling Green. Here is Hayes. Kick off in the corner. Shot filled up by Abby Wright nicely from the corner. Her first three attempt was a mile off. Her last two have been dead on, so she zeroed her sights. Turning into more of a perimeter game here of late. Another three ball on the way by Cecil around the rim, no good. Euchre, the offensive board, put back up, no. Santoro, and again, we'll get to the free throw line. She thought she had a good chance at an and one there. Well, good work underneath by both Euchre and Santoro. Again, good positioning under the basket that time as they were able to get themselves in position to pull down a rebound on both sides. Classic facial expression there as she indicated she thought that ball was going to drop. But she gets two free throws out of the deal. Perfect. She's up to 13 points now. Last year she averaged 12 at 7.4 rebounds, which is second on the team. And it drops through. It got the good shooter's touch there. And Bowling Green lead is seven. And you get the feeling that if it turns into this kind of perimeter-oriented three-point shooting game, that's going to stand Bowling Green in good stead. No question. Falcons would have no problem with that. They are dictating the style of play here after Eastern imposed their will in that first quarter. Ball knocked away again. Again, Bowling Green with those quick hands on defense, nearly coming up with a steal, and even though they didn't, the possession arrow goes Eastern. That means later on it'll be going to Bowling Green, maybe at a more key moment. They have hounded Eastern Kentucky away from the basket and made it very difficult for them to get inside as they were doing with some success early. They tried to go in there again and knocked away by Euchre. Shot clock went, but the ball was already stolen. Lambert dished to Centoro in traffic, yes! And there's her and one. Well, a great play there, no question about it. Again, the pass, and that really set up, you'll see it here, that really sets up Santoro underneath there. Now, instead of taking that ball all the way in, it's dropped off there, and the easier basket for Santoro, and she draws the foul at the same time. At first glance, I was thinking maybe Lambert should have taken it in all the way, but it turned out nicely. She made a perfect dish underneath, and... Santoro got to the line, she missed the free throw, but Bowling Green has a nine point lead. And again, they're just swarming on defense and coming up with all kinds of turnovers in the middle of the floor. And the intensity really remains high. The hustle. And an offensive foul on Jalen Martin. So giving up the body there, Haley Puck. She's tough, she took that ball under the jaw in the first <laughs> possession, got run over there. And Comes up none the worse for wear. Senior captain. Started 24 games last year. She was third on the team in three-point shots made and steals. Lambert open. And she puts it in. You can see Bowling Green's effective three-point shooting. Now they're drawing them out, exactly. and they can go to the basket. Exactly right, and it, it's making a difference and opening things up, and it's really creating a lot of balance scoring here. And they've got an 11-point lead now. Long shot, no good. Again, this is not Eastern's game. They're a little flummoxed, I think. Off their game, a little bit rattled. 
In comes Lambert all the way, yes! 13 point Bowling Green lead. Timeout by the Colonels and they are a little bit shell shocked at the way Bowling Green has been dominating the floor here of late, up by 13. Jennifer Roos very excited over there. She's always very demonstrative, as we said, but I think she's got to be happy at the intensity level and the execution level she's seeing for the first game of the season. Yeah, both are very high right now, and you have to wonder, you have to wonder how long Bowling Green can keep this up because, again, they are really playing very hard out there, and they're, they really are. They're just out hustling Eastern Kentucky at this time. There's no question. They're showing more heart, and it's, I think that's probably one of the reasons that you're seeing the, them pull away here, again, with this 13-point lead. And remembering, again, they trailed by five at the end of the first half. So the three-point shooting and the defense taking away the inside game of Eastern Kentucky proving to be differences right now. Yeah, it was 15-10 after the first. It's been 30-12 to here in the second quarter. We still have over two minutes to go. They've already scored 30 points inside. Nice move by a queen. Hayes, and she, they really needed her to just pick it up and make a play. But Bowling Green right back down, and Lambert hit Cecil underneath, or Euchre underneath, for a 13-point lead again. And again, that was just a case of Bowling Green beating them down the court and getting in position for that basket. I think they were admiring the play that Hayes made and got beaten back down the floor Did Eastern Kentucky. Hayes. Sidestep puck, but stolen away by Lambert. Bowling Green is just stealing Eastern Kentucky blind right now inside a nice defensive play there by Taylor Richardson as she denied the ball and then came out with it. Rosario for Richardson. Bad pass, fluttered right into the arms of Haley Puck. Two on two. Puck tried to get to the basket and kick it back out. And a blocking foul was called. Fortunately, too, because she was kind of caught between a rock and a hard place <laughs> without much to do. She was got bailed out with that foul call. Yeah, she had to. She just had to get rid of the ball at that point, and uh, it did. It worked in Bowling Green's favor, no question. Couldn't beat the defender. Did not have a play back, right. but by that time the foul had already been called. I like Bowling Green's aggressiveness in going to the basket. They've been drawing a lot of fouls. You, know, you can have a team filled with great free throw shooters, but if you never get to the line, what good is it? It doesn't, yep, it doesn't help, right. And that's maybe been the case a little bit in the last couple of years, but in this game, they are really showing a lot of fire and drawing a number of fouls by going hard to the basket. One out of two there, they lead by 14, which is their largest lead. Rosario. Euchre cutting off her path, had to pick that up was, a dribble. You could see getting under their skin. That was this. an excellent defensive play. Euchre coming all the way out from under the basket to seal off that play. They're a little bit befuddled. Hayes blocked from behind by Sierra Thompson. A foul is called. But there have been times when Eastern Kentucky has been visibly frustrated by the defensive pressure being put on them by Bowling Green. And this will be a must for Bowling Green to be successful this year is to play this kind of defense night in and night out. Hayes hits the shot. But again, we talked about the substitutions. There's another one occurring here for uh, Bowling Green. But the point being that when you do have a bench, a deep bench like the Falcons do, it's going to make it that much easier to be able to put in those fresh players, those fresh bodies to keep that intensity level up. Yeah, you want to play a high-tempo game, you've got to have depth. And they apparently have it, and the ones coming off the bench here, like Kennedy Williams, very quick, very athletic in their own right. And they can play that kind of a game. Pass intended for Katarian Thompson, broken up and intercepted by a Queen Hayes. Neat move, laid off under the basket and dropped in gingerly by Madison Wood. Good adjustment there. I think if she had tried to put it up as normal, she would not have been able to make it from in tight like that. And a great play by Hayes, too. And there's another steal. 
Williams ran right into a heavy collision, passed down the floor, and Rosario right at the buzzer. Count it. Less than a second left, and Eastern Kentucky goes to the locker room on a bit of a high note, getting back to single digits there. Look at that collision pass out, and I don't know if she was aware of the time, but she just beat the clock by a fraction of a second. Eight-point halftime lead for Bowling Green. Forty-three thirty-five, Bowling Green leading Eastern Kentucky at halftime here of this game. And a really explosive second quarter for Bowling Green. They scored 33 points, but Eastern Kentucky a little bit of a burst there, and so now they go in just eight points down. It's a little bit of a different outlook than it was just a minute or so before the end of the half. Very true. They not only got it down under 10, but they were able to make that little bit of a run there right before halftime. And, of course, that's always a momentum lift when you can get a basket as the clock expires to end either a quarter or a half. So Eastern Kentucky with a little bit of momentum, to say the least. They're not going away. Momentum was a key to that first half as Eastern Kentucky controlled a lot of the first quarter with their inside play. Bowling Green scored their first couple of possessions, then went a little bit cold, but then Bowling Green picked up the tempo. They got a lot of steals in the open court and changed the play around after some early success by Eastern Kentucky. And I think that was the key. Uh, we talked about it a little bit, but that defense certainly, think about rebounding. Bowling Green winning the battle in rebounds, 15 to 10 so far in this one, and the three point, or excuse me, and the free throw shooting. Hey, the three-point shooting hasn't been bad either, but the free-throw shooting, particularly, again, Bowling Green hitting 12 of 17. So 12 points in the free-throw line. That's got to please the coaches. See that steal by Lambert there. That was a key. Bowling Green generating a lot of turnovers in the middle of the floor. Some good individual efforts, particularly by a Queen Hayes, the Mississippi former all-freshman player from the SEC. And that carried Eastern Kentucky for a while. They were able to get inside early in the game, but then Bowling Green started taking that away from them. Took away the inside game and, again, slowed down Hayes. She came in, gave him that spark right away. But as she was trying to penetrate, they, she got sealed off. So did her teammates. And, again, that defense collapsing in the paint for Bowling Green to really help turn things around here as well as getting those steals. You see Eastern Kentucky making a few three-point shots that help keep them at least within striking distance, but it does not appear that that is really their game as much as it is Bowling Green, who's been a team built around perimeter for the last several years, and they really started opening up. They hit three in a row, and that's what really got them going there in the second quarter. Carly Santoro getting the hot hand for sure from the uh, three-point range, and then, of course, Haley Puck. Puck, again, an excellent outside shooter from three-point, as you may remember from last season. So if you can get those two going as well as anybody else, but once that three point, uh, once those three point shots start to fall, it's trouble for the other side. Hayes is such an outstanding athlete. She ran down that ball, set up that lay in. That was getting near the end of the half, but Bowling Green, particularly with that explosion of three threes and three possessions, opened up a lead. And in fact, they had made a lead as much as 14 points. Now it's down to eight, and Eastern Kentucky might just have a little bit of encouragement going into the second half. 43-35, Bowling Green leading at halftime here at the Stroh Center. <laughs> 43-35, Bowling Green leading Eastern Kentucky in what was a very exciting first half here. And that augurs well for both of these two teams playing in their very first game of the season. But Bowling Green in particular really controlled with their defensive play. That was really, I think, the thing that separated the two teams in the first half. No question about it. And here's a couple of good examples right there, the steal by uh, Haley Puck. And when you look at it, it's a total of six steals all told for Bowling Green. Another one right there by Santoro. And uh, actually, it's uh, Lambert with two of those and Puck with two of those. And again, we were talked about it where they're just reaching in. They're keeping their hands moving. Good anticipation. And of course... When you can't get the steal, you just simply tie up the ball and hopefully it'll go in your favor as far as the arrow. A lot of these came in quick succession too and along with the three consecutive threes, they had two or three consecutive steals that they turned into points and that really helped turn the momentum at a time when Eastern had been in control. No question about that and again, we, we mentioned at one point it was a 14 point lead and what you just alluded to was how it got to that large of a margin. But then, as we mentioned, Eastern Kentucky settling down just a little bit. <laughs> How about that reaction from Carly Santoro there? They're feeling it here tonight, no question. Look at the way they've been giving up the body, too, getting in several 
collisions and continuing to come back for more. Puck, it really took some, some tough going in that first half. And overall, I would have to say Bowling Green have to be pleased with their first half of play in their first game in Eastern to get back within striking distance should be an interesting second half. And we'll be back coming up. Back here at the Stroh Center. Fans here. Pretty good turnout here for a Veterans Day that has a lot of the students out of town now. <laughs> and the town always supports the team very well. 43-35, Bowling Green leading Eastern Kentucky. And we talked a lot about Carly Santoro before the game, preseason All-Mac. I think she gave a very good indication of just why she was preseason All-Mac. She racked up 17 points in the first half, and she just did everything. Had three rebounds, coming up with steals, getting to the free throw line, hitting outside shots, getting to the basket, really did everything that they hope to see out of her this year. Well, she's doing exactly what she needs to do, and that's carrying this team. And again, you go back and you take a closer look at what you had just mentioned. Seven out of nine from the free throw line, two out of three from three-point range, and here's one of those. And she definitely got that hot hand, and they fed her. And she also was able to come up with one of the steals that we saw earlier. There's another one of the threes. So, again, a little bit of everything, both offensively and defensively, as Santoro carrying the team here in that first half as a leading scorer with 17 points. Yep, she looks like she's going to obliterate that 20 points she got at the season opener against Eastern Kentucky last season. Second half, not far away. We'll be right back. Team's back on the floor here. Yes, we still have about three and a half minutes or so before the second half gets underway, so they'll take a little time to get reacclimated. One of the key players for Eastern Kentucky, and we anticipated would be, is a Queen Hayes, number three. And she's really going to be a queen in the OVC. And on this team, a former SEC all freshman team player from Ole Miss. And I think that she's one of the main reasons that Eastern Kentucky is as close as they are right now because when Bowling Green was really coming on, she kind of took the team under her wing and did what she could to keep it from getting too far away from them. Well, it's interesting because she did not start the game, okay? She came off the bench, but yet here at halftime, she's got the most minutes played of anybody with 17. And she's done a nice job with those 10 points that she's put up, but it's really been just the... The intensity that she has brought, she's been the spark, really. Again, coming in off the bench and trying to fire this team up a little bit. And there you can see what she can do as well as moving the ball, the hustle, and chasing down the loose balls. And she's really given um, she's really given this team, Eastern Kentucky, exactly what it's needed as uh, Chrissy Roberts, again, using her, I think, in the right way. And that is just bringing her in off the bench and letting her really ignite the team. As Bowling Green was building their lead and really getting – the Colonel's a little bit unnerved. I started to look to see if Hayes would try to start maybe doing too much individually, trying to force things, but she really didn't. She was just a good a good court floor leader out right. there. She made, you saw that nice dish off she made after the steal, and she kept the team, I think, from panicking in the first half. Well, I mean, this team has still got to get to know her and know how to play with her, and of course, that's something that's going to take a little bit of time. You mentioned she was a transfer. She's one of four transfers on this team. They've got eight freshmen, they've got four transfers. That's 12 new players out of 17 on the squad. And uh, again, Hayes is probably the one that's going to have to be the one to really uh, help this team the most, but her teammates are gonna have to learn how to adjust to her as well. Yep, and that's a process, but she looked very good in that first half. Let's take a break. Bowling Green by eight, just about ready for the second half. From the moment you set foot on campus at BGSU, you'll know this is a place where you can belong. In fact, BGSU is recognized for our strong commitment to engaging students in their education. And Bowling Green is one of the best college towns in America. This is a place where you can stand out. Come to one of the nation's top public universities and choose a program that fits you. 
Take advantage of the Falcon Internship Guarantee, the first of its kind in Ohio. With a BGSU degree, you can go far, further than you ever thought possible. Confident in your qualifications and ready like never before to fly. Belong, stand out, go far at Bowling Green State University. Ready to go for the second half. Jennifer Roos talking to her troops before they come back out. And I think the, the key thing to watch now will be, will Bowling Green be able to keep up that tempo and that level of intensity for an entire ball game that they showed in the first half? I'm not a coach, but if I'm Jennifer Roos, my message is more of the same. I think that's exactly what Bowling Green needs to do. Just continue to bring that intensity and that momentum. And on the other side, of course, a little bit of momentum, as we mentioned, for Eastern Kentucky. <laughs> they want to build on that. So I think the start of this second half, the start of this third quarter, is going to be very key for the Colonels. Eastern Kentucky leads the overall series 5-2 to two against Bowling Green. They beat them last year by two, but they hadn't played them before that since 2003. Bowling Green won that. In all the glory years of Kurt Miller, they, the teams never met. So a little bit of a deceptive number there. A little confusion here Some as that confusion, ball was inbounded. Yep. And they're going to reset the clock, perhaps. Nope, the official says no, they're not going to do that. And Sydney Lambert looked like <laughs> she had taken ill for a moment <laughs> after she received the ball and saw the play stopped. I think maybe she thought that they were going to award it to Eastern Kentucky. And they're having a lengthy conference over there by the scorer's table with five seconds having elapsed here in the quarter. I would think if you would re-inbound the ball unless you're going to give it to Eastern Kentucky then you would have to reset the clock. And Jennifer Roos is now up talking to the officials. And she doesn't look all that <laughs> placated at the moment. And it looks like the teams are going to the bench. You tried to do a little eavesdropping there. I did. You picked up anything? I did. Unfortunately not. Uh, <laughs> again, it was just a situation where they were in front of us here, the, the official and uh, Andreas Ciso, uh, who had inbounded the ball both in front of us here. But I did not hear anything in terms of an explanation. All I heard was him saying, do not reset the clock. Right. And so that would raise an interesting question then. Bowling Green is going to keep the ball. How would you not go back to the 10-minute mark? Nobody for Eastern Kentucky did anything. Nobody right. committed a foul or knocked the ball out that would necessitate them putting it in again with some time run off the clock. And they're all over there having a summit conference. <laughs> Meanwhile, the cheerleaders are on hand. A few of them stayed in town for the long weekend, Veterans Day, and a few of the Falcon dance team members are here and some dance members in the stands too here. I was going to say, those are the future dance <laughs> They're members. busting some moves. Yes. <laughs> they figure, hey, you're a little short. Maybe we can come down and fill out the squad tonight. <laughs> and I'm still a little bit of a loss to try to figure out exactly what occurred there. But well, it, now they're calling both coaches over, so apparently... It's straightened out, and they just need to explain it because we're not the only ones here who are a little confused. All right. An illegal substitution was made, and it looks like they're going to be some free throws taken. Right. They're going to take two free throws. Eastern Kentucky and is going to be charged with that, and Sidney Lambert will get to the free throw line. She didn't look happy when the first call was made. <laughs> I guess she's right. much more pleased now. So an illegal substitution, two free throws, and that explains, of course, why the time will not be put back on the clock. So we'll resume action with 9.55 to play here in the third quarter. Sidney Lambert has been a top free throw shooter for Bowling Green.
Martin as well as three-point marksman. So she hits that shot to give Bowling Green a nine-point lead, a little bit of a bonus here before the play really even begins. They extend their lead, but it will stay at nine for the moment. And so, now we'll do it all over again yeah. with a nine-point lead instead of an eight-point lead. <laughs> Deja vu here. See that in volleyball a lot where before they start play, there's questions about the lineup. Driving and unable to finish that. Haley Puck back down the floor, one-on-one. -on -one. Nice jump cut. Ball laid up, no good, however. Battle for the rebound. Bowling Green finally came up with it. Good effort by Hayes, but she couldn't finish. A yeah, tremendous effort as she was wrestling that ball away from three players underneath. Now back comes Cecil. She missed, but Santoro digs out the rebound and puts it in off glass, and she continues to be very scrappy in addition to just very skilled out on the floor. Being in the right place at the right time, but knowing where to be, I think, is the key to that. As, again, she positioned herself perfectly underneath and was able to get the follow-up shot. Tore the ball away from three players. And Cecil got down the court in a hurry with Hayes in pursuit. And Santoro, a strong offensive rebound. As we said, she was the second leading rebounder on the team last year with almost seven and a half a game. Bowling Green lead is now 12. And not an auspicious beginning of the second half here for the Colonels. Hayes. Right, hit a couple of three balls. Right has in this game, nearly stolen. Hayes got it back inside. Offensive foul on Madison Wood as she just bumped the defender aside before laying the ball in. Good effort defensively by Euchre. And Bowling Green has shown the willingness to take the punishment in this game. Santoro getting to the basket nicely and finishes 49 to 35 and she's already cracked the 20 point mark. Now she saw a little bit of a crease and she took advantage of it there dribbling around two players to get that layup. It's like a quarterback on a read option as she looked like she was going to give the ball off their teammate cutting behind but decided to keep it and went all the way. Under the basket again nothing really there for Solomon she just threw one up rather hopefully Nothing doing. Cecil to Puck. Crowd starting to really get into this game now. Puck puts it up from outside, no good. Euchre the rebound. Euchre the follow, yes! Despite being double teamed. Well, Jan Euchre doing a nice job. Again, very determined to go back up with that ball. She knew she had the height advantage and she was gonna take advantage of it under there. And it paid off. Right, a nice rotation on that shot. That's three, she scored nine points all on three point shots. And as a result, she's the second leading scorer behind Hayes even though she's hardly touched the ball. But when she has, she's made it count. Cecil inside. She was bumped a little bit by right. Incidental contact, it threw the shot off. No good but off the foot of an Eastern player. And Bowling Green will maintain possession. Madison Wood going off, a little bit of a frustrating sequence of play for her. She got called for that offensive foul and denied a basket underneath. Lambert from outside, no good. Cecil almost pried that rebound loose, but Wright got it out to Hayes. Hayes, a very controlled player, as we said, even though she's got all the skills to explode. And there's that. Step back, no good. Right, just thwarted by Euchre. The ball came loose to Lambert. Got the numbers, but knocked out of Lambert's hands by Shea Solomon, who was coming back hard. Hayes, they rotate the ball nicely. In the corner for a shot, maybe partially blocked by Jalen Martin, or off Jalen Martin as she released the ball. It going after Santoro. Looked like well after the whistle. They kept grabbing at it, and timeout is called. 6.50 to go in a third quarter that's been all Bowling Green. They lead by 13, 51, 38 over Eastern Kentucky. Yeah. 
So Bowling Green led by eight going into the second half. They led by five after the first quarter and then really seemed to be blowing them out. Eastern made a little bit of a run there at the end of the second quarter, but Bowling Green since has just picked right up where they were for most of the second quarter. Well, we talked about the importance of the start of the third quarter for Eastern Kentucky, and again, what has happened here is they've actually been outscored by five to start the quarter, so I think what we're seeing is that, uh, as that last timeout was called, right before that, you saw a little bit of, um, well, I'm going to call it a little Frustration, I think. We, we had alluded to it before in terms of Eastern Kentucky maybe being a little bit frustrated. We talked about some of the expressions, the facial expressions, the body expressions. But I think what you saw there, it got just a little bit chippy. And uh, really, it was uh, Abby Wright underneath fighting for that rebound. But Santoro, again, as you can Here's see. Here's where it really got yep, chippy. This is what I was referring to. And again, Santoro all around that ball. And then Wright reaches in again for it one more time. So The whistle had already gone, but three grabs came after the whistle. And they've got to keep their composure. Chrissy Roberts, she was an assistant for six years at East Carolina before coming back to her alma mater. She had a couple of stints as an assistant at Eastern Kentucky. And she was thrilled to come back to the school at which she was a Hall of Famer as a player. Jennifer Roos was with Kurt Miller through all of the glory years for Bowling Green as his top assistant and took over as head coach. Had a couple of tough years and is now faced with the challenge of really rebuilding the program. And there's some optimism out here tonight. Well, I think that was, that was is what I was going to add there, Greg, is because you're looking at two coaches, both of whom have been successful as head coaches, but I think really both of whom meet the challenge of recruiting. And that's really been the biggest thing, especially this particular season again now. We talked about the number of new players, the high turnover, the new faces on both of these teams. And really what you're going to see this year is going to be the result of their recruiting efforts. Bowling so. Green has had so many recruits over the last several years that you look at their background and you just think, outstanding. They had Rachel Myers was a player of the year in Ohio. Santoro was a player of the year in Ohio. Cecil was a first-team All-State player. But they haven't really gelled up to this point. And it's starting to – I would what I would say about what we've seen so far is the Bowling Green team has gelled very well. It takes time to develop chemistry. There's no question about it. Individual talent is one thing, and it's, a t it's something that every team needs, but you've got to play well together. Inside pass. Somehow it found its way to Euchre, and it's tied up in Bowling Green. I thought they had the possession arrow up the last time, but it looks like the ball's going back to Eastern Kentucky. Things are going well. They tried to pass the ball through three pairs of legs, and it still got its way to Euchre. <laughs> so that bodes well, I guess. Might be their night. Boy, tonight, Bowling Green's volleyball team playing a huge game at Akron as they try to finish up their first MAC title in 25 years. And a hockey weekend here as the hockey team hosting Lake Superior for two games. A lot going on in BGSU athletics. There's a shot good by Jalen Martin to get them back within 11. You almost get the feeling it should be a larger margin the way the third quarter's gone. There's no question about it. It feels very much like it should be. But again, Eastern Kentucky continues to hang around. Well, look at Santoro. Bombs away. She is now eclipsed the 20-point mark. And the Falcons up 14. It's already gone by what she did in that season opener last year. That was her first double-double of her career, the 20-point 12 rebound effort and a 57-55 Eastern Kentucky win in Richmond, Kentucky to start last season. Shea Solomon out for Hayes. Solomon, and she hits. Hayes has been doing that well. She'll penetrate, she'll get a couple defenders to collapse, then she can kick out for an open three. And find the open, open uh, player, and that's exactly what the result of her being able to drive and penetrate early in this game. So the Obviously, the Falcons have to respect that. Euchre wide open. That shot offline, and underneath the basket, it appears that Solomon is going to be called for a foul. Just to kind of continue what we were talking about there with Hayes, Greg, I have noticed that obviously she loves to penetrate. She'll take it to the basket, but I have noticed that she will not pull up from the outside. The longest shot she has taken in this game has maybe been from about 10 feet. So she was not the type of player that's going to take that long-range shot. 
Instead, she'll look to pass it off. Or take it right to the basket, but well, that's not, her pull preference. Up, not pull up right. to the outside. That's been very noticeable. Blocking foul here on Abby Wright. Santoro has just been all smiles here tonight. <laughs> Rightfully so to this point. So we're past the midway mark of the third quarter. Falcons up 11, but still too close for comfort. Lambert, fade, no good. Out of contact. And the foul is called that time on Cecil as she was fighting for the rebound. I like the aggressiveness, really, for Bowling Green. They have not really been a team noted for that in the last probably couple of seasons at least. And they really have been going all out for every loose ball, everything up for grabs tonight. Timeout on the floor. They lead by 11 over Eastern Kentucky. Four forty-eight to go, third quarter. Bowling Green leading 54 to 43. And I think we're getting to the point where we're gonna see how the game's gonna progress from here. It's probably a little bit closer than maybe it seems like it should be right now, but I think Eastern's gonna to have to make a serious bid to get back in the ball game or Bowling Green might break this open. So the rest of this third quarter, I think is gonna be important. Abby Wright. That one no good. Rebound, Shea Solomon back out. Nice little pass setting up Madison Pierce for an open eight-footer, no good. Knocked out of bounds, Eastern Kentucky will maintain possession. As you're talking about that, I'm thinking that maybe Eastern Kentucky is going to start looking for the outside shot a little bit more here to try to get back into this one. Abby Wright has been effective. She let that one go. She has, and we've talked about how Hayes has been able to dish off and find the open man, so we'll see. Knocked away inside again. Good play by Sierra Thompson. Talking everything about Santoro, what she's done with her 25-point effort. Sierra Thompson's been another major bright spot for Bowling Green in this game. Outside shot put up no good by Madison Parker. Look at that hustle on the rebound by Thompson. Tried to save it, just failed, but you love to see that kind of hustle. Well, you do, and I think I'm going to go as far as to say it's been contagious here yes. tonight. I really do. That energy, that hustle, that giving up the body, we've seen it from everybody on that, uh, on that Falcon team so far tonight. Absolutely. And they fed off the efforts by some of their key players early in the game. And when you see the key players doing that, the top players, everybody tends to follow suit. Baseline pass nicely to right. Bullying her way in, no good. Follow up, no good. And Thompson engaged in a real struggle for that rebound. And the possession arrow this time, Bowling Green as Hayes was really fighting Thompson for that ball up for grabs. Yeah, a, keen to or a Queen Thompson, rather, only 5'8", but uh, she's not afraid to go underneath and try to do some battle with the taller players. She just may be the queen of the OVC. As I said earlier, definitely... Brings a high level skill game. There is Thompson though. She also does the same, laying it in 56-43. She can explode to the basket. Hayes, really a floor general. Directing traffic, nice lob pass inside to Wright who scores as Lambert tried to help out underneath, couldn't quite intercept that pass. Well, it definitely looks like Looks like the plan is to get Wright more involved offensively here. She's into double digits now. In fact, she's the leading scorer on the team with 11 points now. Going hard to the basket, Lambert. She ended up putting it right over the backboard. Thought she was fouled and having a little bit of a conversation with the official. Pretty much a one-sided conversation yes. now. More of a monologue than a dialogue. <laughs> but she had roughly the same expression as she did when they blew the whistle in the first couple of seconds of the third quarter. That came out well for us. She ended up getting a free trip to the line. Still an 11-point lead. They could get to single digits on this possession. Outside, 
Ball is put up, no good by Jalen Martin. Rebound, Cecil. And she doesn't hesitate to bring the ball up the floor. We've seen that a couple times. Lowered to elbow, a block is called. <laughs> Rather incredulous is Madison Pierce. She really took a blow, but she wasn't as much of a blow as she took. She was not set defensively. No, she wasn't. They were both moving, and you could see it right there. Give them both credit, I'll tell you. Uh, I mean, obviously, knowing that that was coming, she knew she knew it was going to happen on that play, Can you and call? she still hung in there. Can you call offsetting fouls? <laughs> she yeah. came in with her shoulder pretty hard. And CISO, of course, was not about to be denied no. either. She was going to continue to the basket. It looks like Bowling Green is going to have more strength in the interior than they've had in the last several years with the likes of Cecil, Euchre, and Sierra Thompson. And they're up 13. 14 has been their high water mark as far as a lead in this game. And now back into the ball game comes Bria Bass, who had 19 points in the Davis Elkins exhibition. That's a game when the whole team just had 67, so she accounted for nearly a third of the scoring, but she has not been a factor tonight offensively. Inside of Hayes. Nice lay in, not thinking twice to go to the left hand when she sensed the pressure coming at her. That was interesting. I noticed that too, but she, uh, she had made up her mind that she was going to stay with it, and she used the left hand very well there. Total confidence. And go into the offhand. Lambert, pull up. 10-footer, yes. Lambert up to nine points. Shea Solomon ran into a roadblock. Was fortunate to dish the ball off and maintain possession. Bass inside to Madison Pierce. A good move under the basket. Reverse layup to get him within 11. We're here in the talk. Thompson, and was fouled by Abby Wright. And that will be a shooting foul, as that is number five on Eastern Kentucky here in this third quarter. And yeah, they're calling it against Abby Wright, and I believe that'll be her third personal foul. Shot no good by Thompson. She's been hot and cold from the free throw line. Missed a couple, then hit four in a row, then missed this one. So with that foul, Wright checks out. And coming in is going to be Richardson, Taylor Richardson. Another Mississippi product on this team. Shot was good, 61-49. She got 11 points in a state title game that her team ended up winning. as a high school player, so she can perform under pressure. Solomon, Bowling Green, they went to that 2-3 zone. It has proven effective after Eastern started off very well, getting the ball inside. Shot from the baseline, good by Madison Pierce. They're within 10. Final minute, third quarter. Santoro driving nicely. And draws a foul again. Every time she has gone to the basket, just about, she has succeeded in drawing a foul. Well, that and I think the other thing is that when you see Eastern starting to make just a little bit of a run or a little bit of a move to try to close this gap, you'll see Bowling Green go to Santoro. They'll be looking for her at that point, riding her hot hand here tonight. She had nine free throw attempts in the first half. Now 10, she's 8 for 10 from the line, so she not only can get to the line, but she can make the most of the opportunities, which is really important. And they have a 12-point lead again. And this lead has just you know, gone back and forth between 10 and 13 points here in this third quarter. Well, again, it was eight at the end of the half, and you know that Eastern Kentucky would love to get it below 10 here for the start of the uh, fourth quarter. And the Bowling Green will be content to trade baskets the rest of the way. Oh, no question. Here is Bass. Up high for Hayes. Beautiful spin dribble, but Cecil helped out defensively to cut her off, but she 
was called for the foul, and Hayes will get to the line. Cecil, a six foot one sophomore. And she is a presence under there, but Hayes, very, very elusive. A lot of players would have been called for charging on that play, but she was able to draw the block. Euchre back on for Cecil. Madison Wood back on for Abby Wright for Eastern Kentucky. Trying to get it to 10 once more. That shot no good, however. Rebounded by Madison Parker. And she brings the ball up quickly. Tried to get it to Santoro, knocked away by Shea Solomon. Bowling Green maintains the ball, but only .2 seconds showing on the clock, and they won't have time to do anything except try to throw it up to the basket. Well, right there for the first time tonight, we saw that trap defense that we were expecting to see much earlier from Eastern Kentucky. I don't know if they got that one on time or not, but it didn't go. And that's the end of the third quarter. So Bowling Green is able to slightly increase their lead from 8 to 11. And they'll go into the fourth up 63-52. Just underway, fourth quarter. Eastern Kentucky with the initial possession. And a steal by Santoro. Trying to outleg Hayes to the ball. She did and laid it in. We're right back to what gave Bowling Green the advantage early in the game. Yes, indeed. No question about it. Carly Santoro there with her second steal of the night. And, I mean, she really has. She's played both ends of the court so very well here tonight. And both of those steals she turned into points at the other end. And even though Hayes had, probably has more flat-out foot speed, she shielded her off and got the layup to go. Rebound of the missed shot, Madison Wood scores. Eastern Kentucky still within 11. They're one run away from getting right back into this ball game. And in this sense, they have done well on the road against the Bowling Green team that has really been playing well. Partially blocked shot, Centora underneath, and again, will earn her way to the free throw line. You look at her and you don't necessarily think there's a really physical player a really scrappy player, but she belies that with her effort. Well, she is 5'10". She's listed as a guard, but I mean, I think what you're seeing here tonight is just pure heart more so than anything. Just really playing all out. And then we mentioned how her perseverance allowed her to overcome what threatened to be a very serious injury, possibly a career-ending one before she even got to high school, and she fought through that and not only fought through it, but went on to outstanding success at a high level, and that is an indication of her determination. See Coach Roberts over there coaching up Rhea Bass. Free throw is good, 66-54. Hayes guarded by Santoro. That's a good matchup for Bowling Green, somebody to really try to hound her and Make it difficult for her. Entry pass and no room there and a traveling call. Well, the pass just a little bit long and she had to reach for it underneath along the baseline and was able to get uh, a little bit of a handle on it but then ended up having to travel because she couldn't get full control. Defended well by Jane Euchre. Again, she missed the rest of the season after playing in the first 12 games. Great penetration. And lay-in by Haley Puck. The game started inauspiciously for her. She got hit in the jaw with a loose ball, but she has come on to play very well both sides of the floor. Hayes for Jalen Martin. Deflected. That was almost off of, could have easily gone off of Hayes and out of bounds after Puck got her hand on the pass. There's Hayes trying a perimeter shot. No good. Rebound Centora. Looked like a pretty solid effort. The ball was on line. No good, though. Centoro with the left-handed fadeaway layup attempt. No good. Right back 
Up comes Jalen Martin. And I think that time Carly Jack just a little too far under the basket, further than she wanted to, and had to go to the left hand. And by the time she realized she was that far away, she was out of options. Nonetheless, can cut her some slack on that. There's a shot good by Puck from way outside. 17-point lead, and the Falcons may be starting to break it open. Well, they left Puck open, and that, of course, is a mistake. She had a good look at the basket. She had her feet set. Nobody in her face, and she put it down. Everyone on this Bowling Green team can shoot threes. I and mean, you can't forget about any of them. Timeout on the floor, Bowling Green up to a 17-point lead with 7.08 to go. <laughs> 71 to 54. I mentioned that that lead had been oscillating back and forth between 10 and 13 points, and then all of a sudden they busted it out to 17 and it's getting to the point where it's now or never time for Eastern Kentucky to make a game out of this. It's interesting though when you take a closer look at the stats there's a couple things we just wanted to share here. Solomon outside. We'll get to that in a moment. There's another look at where Hayes could have spotted up. Right. She did a few moments ago and actually had a pretty good release. Now she does try for the three, but because the shot clock was running out, they got it back, though, to Solomon. She's not oriented towards the shot first. That's clear, but when she has put it up, she looks like she has decent mechanics on the perimeter shot. See what she does here. She'll take it in. Taking on four defenders, a whistle before she pulled up. And a foul. That will be called on Thompson. But just getting back to some of those statistics that we alluded to, it may not reflect the score here. Again, 71-54, so you're looking at a 14-point advantage. But yet the shooting from the floor, virtually even between these two teams. And rebounding virtually even. But the difference, of course... The things we've been talking about, the free throw shooting and the turnovers and the three-point shots, all favoring Bowling Green. They have getting, been getting to the line all night long. Centora, that one came up short. That was a, almost a put toward the goal. And it just clanged off the front rim, but they got the rebound. Those three categories definitely are the difference in this game. Lambert. All in all, to this point, it's been an outstanding opening game performance by Bowling Green. They won by 30 in their exhibition game over Division II Seton Hill. And that typically is not an outstanding barometer. You have to get into actual competition. And as we said at the start, these two teams look to be very similar and very evenly matched. I and mean, it's got to be encouraging for Bowling Green that they're performing this well. And Eastern Kentucky has been very competitive for most of the game, although it's opened up a bit here of late. Puck tosses it up. No good. Look at Thompson go up for the rebound over right, and then she draws a foul. And again, no hesitation. Got the rebound and ready to go right back up with it, only to be sealed off underneath that time. So Thompson, again, playing very physical, playing with great aggression. Sarah Thompson, Coach Roberts starting to see this thing slip further and further away. Thompson, 42 there, going to the free throw line. What a versatile all-around player she is out of Illinois. Her senior year, and she was honorable mention All-State, and locally she was player of the year. 16 points, 11 rebounds, 1.5 assists, 1.3 steals, 1.9 blocks. So there really isn't an aspect of the game that she did not pack the stat sheet. I don't think she's going to be quite an addition to this team. From Mattoon, Illinois. Well, the Falcons did lose their inside presence from last year. We were talking about it earlier. Ashley Tunstall, right? The uh, player who came over, of course, from Owens Community College. 
Did a nice job for the Falcon team inside, but didn't have the same physicality, I don't think, as what we're seeing here from Thompson. We're also seeing that from Euchre and Cecil. Falcons up by 18. This Eastern Kentucky team would be a very competitive team in the Mid-American Conference. So from that standpoint, Bowling Green has to feel like this is a very encouraging game for them. Well, you know what's interesting about that? Foul on Lamb or Puck up there as she tried to take the ball from Bass. Again, as we've mentioned, as you know, Eastern Kentucky from the Ohio Valley Conference, but against MAC opponents, they have a winning record, 31 and 22, against teams from the Mid Atlantic or Mid American Conference. And we mentioned five and two overall against Bowling Green, including a victory last year. Santoro overcommitted, going for the steal. Hayes took it all the way in, missed the left-hand layup, though. Lambert, Santora wide open, lets her go. That one way off. Her last two three-point shots from that spot have not been too close to finding the mark. And then she hustled back down the court hard and knocked it away from Shea Solomon. And that's what you really like to see, obviously. Uh, the defensive effort getting back down the court. Gee, she's only got 30 points at those two shots I was, that I mentioned she missed had gone in. She'd have 36. I'm glad you said that because I looked up <laughs> at that scoreboard a little bit earlier and I said, does that really say 30? <laughs> I wasn't sure if my eyes were deceiving me or not. Katarian Thompson comes in, and I think this is by design that the crowd will give Carly Santoro a great round of applause. You see Jennifer Roos giving her a little bit of an embrace, and why not because I think she is – Definitely shown that she's all Matt caliber, and she was a preseason all-league selection. Rebound underneath, reaching right over Katarian Thompson. Madison Wood will get to the free throw line. It will be interesting to hear the post-game comments because we'd have to look at some statistics, obviously, to compare as far as individual statistics uh, we're talking about for uh, for Carly. But I. I might go as far as to say this could be one of, if not, well, it is definitely one of. I may go as far to say it is maybe the best game she's ever played. It's certainly on the short list, and I would not hesitate in nominating it for that. But, I mean, all around. We're talking points. We're talking steals. Absolutely. It's been a catalyst in every category you can imagine. 16-point lead as they hit those free throws. And we'll see if they can take it the last four and a half minutes without Carly Santoro. And she has scored not too far off of half of their points in this game. Cecil, the fadeaway, no good. Rebound to Bass, kick out. Owens, or I should say Hayes, back for right, no good. Got her own rebound. And they'll reset, but they can't afford to take too much time off on these offensive possessions at this point if they still have any fading designs on getting back into it. They almost have to hit some three-point shots. Fake, put up, no good by Wood. Rebound Cecil. Yeah, four points this entire quarter so far for Eastern Kentucky with over, well, with about a third of the quarter to go. Bowling Green has slightly added their lead well, they were down by five at the end of the first quarter, if you recall, 15 to 10. They were up eight by the end of the first half, 11 by the end of the third, and now 18 on that penetration by Katarian Thompson. Her, her uncle is Ozzie Newsom, the great, one of the great NFL tight ends of all time from the University of Alabama and Cleveland Browns. She got some of his athleticism, I think. But can she block? Yeah. That's the question. <laughs> This has definitely been a physical game that most tight ends would like to be in tonight. <laughs> Hayes surrounded by three defenders. Loose on the floor. Thompson, it's tied up. Possession arrow, Bowling Green. Bowling Green has really won most of the battles for loose balls. And that's one of the reasons that they've had steals. Some of their steals have been clean steals, and others they get a hand on the ball. Yeah. Then there's a little bit of a scramble for it, and they've come out with it 99% of the time. Exactly, it would exactly. And again, it's just that 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 thinking of 
trying to reach in, trying to go for the ball. That mentality of really hawking, ball hawking, and they've been doing an excellent job of it. Yeah. It was evident from the very early portion of this game, even when Eastern Kentucky was leading, that Bowling Green was going to bring a high level of intensity and energy to this game, and it's finally really paid off in a major way. Thompson, left-hand shot, that one fluttered short of the basket. Thompson, 30 games off the bench last year. She was All-State three straight years from Lima Senior High School. Just about an hour south of here. Got a lot of excellent local products on this team from probably an hour or so radius each way from Bowling Green. And Madison Wood is fouled and she'll get to the free throw line. She's a Kirkwood Community College transfer from Waterloo, Iowa. And she looks like she's got some potential as a low post player for this Eastern Kentucky team. Hit that free throw to make it 74-57. She's had a pretty good game inside and outside here tonight. She's done a good job on the boards. Shows she can make free throws. I don't think that this game is particularly as encouraging as it's been for Bowling Green, I don't think it's particularly discouraging for Eastern Kentucky. They've shown a lot of qualities themselves for a team playing on the road against a home team that's on top of its game. Thompson no good off glass, fighting for the rebound. Another tie-up between Sierra Thompson and Madison Wood. And again, when those balls are tied up, the Bowling Green player tends to be the aggressor, whether it's tied up or not. Yeah, that was a perfect example we have been talking about. and. Um Again, I think it, it really does go back to what we mentioned earlier, too, the depth that this team has this year because to continue to play at this high level of intensity with this kind of energy, it's going to take that entire bench. The crowd giving an appreciative round of applause for Sierra Thompson. And Bowling Green has been one of the dominant programs in the nation for over a decade period. They've been down the last couple of years, and before that, a couple of down years, and they were dominant team for a decade before that and Falcon fans can almost dare to hope that they could be starting to move in that direction again with this performance. Shot no good. That looked like an old fashioned set shot from Madison Wood. No good. There's a nice effort on the reverse layup by Shea Solomon. Had just enough room under the basket that time to come around the base or to come across the baseline under the basket and get the reverse layup. Just over a minute to go. And it's a matter of playing out the string here. Sydney Lambert has had nine points in this game. Second leading scorer after Centora, who has just been on fire. She's stolen the show tonight. Cecil for three, knocks it down. 77 to 30. And it looks like a substitution here. And we're going to start to get the reserves on. Yep. Maddie Cole, a local product from Sylvania Northview. Just about a half hour to the north of here. I did not expect to see her tonight. She actually rolled an ankle in practice earlier this week. Had a high ankle sprain, so I didn't think we were going to see Maddie. It's a good sign. Kennedy Williams also coming out for a minute more of experience in her first ever Division I game. And Bowling Green has put on a fine effort here. And as Eastern Kentucky losing, not to Bowling Green, Kentucky, their rivals from Western Kentucky, but <laughs> to Bowling Green, Ohio tonight. And up high to Kennedy Williams. She just bobs around very. Jennifer Roos from the sideline, the coach of the Falcons, just telling her team to run out the clock at this point. And that's exactly what they're going to do. And that's it. 77 to 60, the final score. The Bowling Green Falcons run away finally from the Eastern Kentucky Colonels. So now they have a 30 point exhibition victory and a 17 point season opening victory against a solid opponent. Seems to bode well for them in this young 17-18 season, and we'll be right back.
So the alma mater plays in Bowling Green. A successful season opening effort, a 70 to, 77 to 60 win. And there's, I think, lots of reason for optimism for Bowling Green based on their performance here today. Well, for me, the biggest thing, the defense. No question about it. We talked about the turnovers. We talked about, uh, you know, how they were actually doing such an excellent job of going after the ball, creating those turnovers, those steals, cashing in on them. Look at this fourth quarter. Eight points is all they gave up, did the Falcons, in the fourth quarter. So a lot of things stand out, but none to me more than the team defense. They outscored Eastern Kentucky in the second half, 32 to 25. They really put the clamps on. And this Eastern Kentucky team, I think they came up against the Bowling Green team that was really on their game, but they have a lot of things going for them. I think they'll be very competitive in the OVC as well. No question about it. They showed a lot here tonight. They really did. And uh, I think really if they could have found an answer for, uh, for Carly Santoro, it would have been a slightly different game. But yeah. what an outstanding effort by that young woman tonight. Yep, Eastern will be looking for their third straight trip to the OVC championship game and maybe to win it this year, although they got a young team. That will do it from the Stroh Center for Ken Garland and our crew. I'm Greg Franke saying so long from the Stroh Center. The final score, the Bowling Green Falcons 77, the Eastern Kentucky Colonels 60. To watch this entire game on replay as well as other games on our family of ESPN networks, log on to watchespn.com or download the Watch ESPN app. This has been a presentation of ESPN.